Yes, so welcome everyone. Once again, welcome to our SME Women event today. Um, as I mentioned, I'm really excited um, to see all of you online. I'm also very excited to see my lovely panelists joining me today. So thank you so much. And um, just to share with you who I've got with me online as part of my panelists. So we've got the amazing um, Medina Harvari, who's also one of my uh, interviewees for today. So Medina, if you can just say hi to everyone. Good evening, everybody. Welcome and look forward to having a fantastic time together. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Medina. I also have with me another amazing woman in business with me, uh, Malibu Khing Mklanga. So she's also joining us. And if you can just say hi to everyone, Malibu Khing. You are on mute. Just unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Looking forward to engaging with you this evening and having some great time. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then we also have our SME woman with us as well, our SME woman representative, Chardonnay Arden. So if you can also just say hi to everyone, Chardonnay. Good evening, everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. So um, we're ready to get started. But I think once again, you know, just to sh share with you really, um, you know, who, who SME Woman is, why I really started this initiative. And for those of you who don't know me, who are joining us for the first time tonight, I'd also just like to tell you a little bit about myself before I get into my panelists for tonight. So firstly, I wanna say well done to each and every one of you out there. So well done for joining us once again this evening. Well done for taking time to invest in yourself. I've been doing these events over the last couple of months and some of you have been coming back you know, every live event that I've been doing over the last couple of months, you've been joining and you've been getting learnings and you've been equipping yourself and empowering yourself. So well done for taking action and investing in yourself. Some of you have also been joining, been joining me every Friday at one o'clock and also getting some more insights as I continue to interview amazing women in business, um, other successful entrepreneurs, and also as I get to share my heart with you on some of the important topics. So I just want to say well done for connecting and well done for, for joining us. And then I also just want to say that um, one of the reasons why I do what I'm doing, so for those of you who know me, you know I'm very passionate about empowering and equipping women in business. So SME Women was launched in 2016 with the main objective to empower and equip and inspire women entrepreneurs in and into business. How we provide you with knowledge, with tools, with resources, with information, that's able to help you actually move your business goals forward. So this is one of the main reasons why I wake up every day is to make sure that I work on this initiative so that I can continue bringing value to yourselves. Why? Because I want each and every one of you to be successful in business as well. And that's really my heart. And today we are going to be doing this a little bit differently. So normally I do the formal you know, online workshops, but today I decided that I'm going to be interviewing and talking to some other women in business because I really believe as the Bible teaches us that iron sharpens iron. So it's important for us to also connect with other successful women and hear how they have been able to navigate themselves, you know, through this journey of entrepreneurship. Now we know obviously that the COVID-19 situation has had a massive impact on businesses across the world. So not just in South Africa, across the world. And the impact has really been um, detrimental to some businesses. I mean, I've been talking to some entrepreneurs over the last couple of months, and um, some of them are in a situation today where they've had to close their doors. So they're not in a position to open, and um, they now have to find new ways and new strategies of actually moving their business goals forward. So we are under no illusion that, this, that the impact of COVID-19 has been significant on a lot of businesses. Lots of people have lost their jobs. We also understand that a lot of people have had to experience salary cuts um, in terms of their income every month. And that of course is, is affecting a lot of households. But at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, now is also a time for us to really dig deep. Now is an opportunity for us to remain positive because as entrepreneurs, even in difficult times, there are still a lot of opportunities. 
and what's happened with COVID-19. COVID-19 has really caused a lot of us, um, and I'm talking about the entrepreneurial community, has caused a lot of us to really dig deep. We've had to dig deep into our creativity. We've had to dig deep into becoming more innovative through our businesses. We've really had to dig deep and become more resilient to become tougher. And we've had, we really had to dig deep and become more focused and committed as we move our entrepreneurial goals forward. So um, I'm sure many of you have also heard that a lot of successful they've been able to successfully move some of their business goals forward and what has really been the anchor in terms of helping them to really su sustain themselves and and to be surviving and and thriving you know during this difficult time so so this is really the objective we want to dig deep uh, with them today and find out what has really been their the anchor and help them to move their goals forward successfully because I think we've heard, we're hearing a lot of negative news out there. It's time for some positivity and also to hear how other women entrepreneurs are moving their goals forward. So I think just to tell you a little bit about the both of them. So I'm just going to be reading their bios here. Very short, don't worry. Um, so let's start with Mulebu King. I've got her bio open in front of me. So as I said, Molebu Heng Mklanga, she's a retail entrepreneur with over 15 years of experience in advertising and the media industry. She's passionate, analytical, and a strategic thinker. Her strong attention to details coupled with good research skills enabled her to recognize good opportunities in finding appropriate media solutions to business challenges and ensuring that her client campaign ideas and strategies were effectively implemented. The more return of investment she delivered for her clients, the more inspired she became into becoming an entrepreneur. So in 2012, she launched her first business an upmarket health and beauty spa. And in 2019, she opened a retail franchise uh, uh, operating successfully in, in Fours, which is in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg, for those of you who don't know. So it's actually located at the Cedar Square. And then her secondary interest as a shareholder in a food franchise operating with the Goldrie City Precinct. So as you can see, this lady's got um, some good experience as far as business is concerned. She's also, um, as she says, a shareholder in a food franchise uh, operating within the Goldrie City Precinct. So I think for Lebu King, just to get right into it. So you and I know each other for a long time. For those of you who don't know, she's a very good friend of mine as well. And we've had the opportunity to spend countless hours together encouraging one another as women in business, you know, as you go through various seasons in your business. But I think let's just hear from her. And Molebu Khen, if you can maybe just tell us a little bit more about yourself. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why you actually accepted the invitation to join me tonight. Good evening again, everyone. This is such a wonderful, wonderful opportunity, Candice, what you're doing. Um, you know, we're living in a society where, as women, it is imperative, utmost important to have our own communities where we can hold each other, where we can uplift each other. And you and I, since the day I met you, we've been doing exactly that. Um, so we met obviously through church and, um, so I am, um, I'm, I'm based in four ways. I am a mother of two, uh, beautiful boys. And, um, after spending 15 years in advertising, I decided enough, you know, you work, you sweat so hard for, um, for, for just to get a paycheck at the end of the month. And when you have to attend to family responsibilities, be it your kids are needing you to attend to some sporting event at school or attend to whatever situation that, that needs you to attend to. 
it became such a hassle for me. And the more I realized that dealing with clients' budget, because that was my job, to client trusted me with their budget to say, we want to um, address these people and this is the money that we have. Um, and this is what we want. So the more I realized that, you know, I am accountable in terms of the money that was given to me as a client to make sure that it delivers what they're looking for, the more I realized that actually I have it in me. Imagine if you were to do that for yourself, for your own company. So that drove me uh, really to into, you know, toying around the idea of wanting to become an entrepreneur. Um, eventually that did happen 2012. I did launch my business and um, sure, three years down the line, Candice, you can tell the story better than I can. <laughs> um, you know, not, the thing is that when, when you get into entrepreneur, you, you tend to think, oh, I'm in it. I'm going to make lots of money. It's going to be a smooth ride. Everything is going to be honky dory. Boy, boy, boy. Let me tell you, I had to go through so many hurdles. I had to go through so many U-turns. I had to go through so many um, challenges. And I'm just so grateful to you, Candy, that you were there every step of the way. And I think both of us, even with your business, we were, we were in a similar boat going through the same thing where we could encourage each other. So I think really it's important, ladies, to have somebody that you, that you know, they've got your best interest at heart, somebody that you really can rely on when it really gets tough, because believe me, it does get tough. So, you know, after three and a half years of running my first business, I had to close that business because I then realized that I was, I felt like I was in a box. And um, one of the things as an entrepreneur, you gotta be able to strategize and, and move from one point to another. Don't get stuck and be swallowed by what you are, uh, are currently in. If it doesn't work, you gotta let it go. One of the problem is that we keep on keeping on and you're like, okay, you try different strategies. You try different rescue uh, solution to, to remedy this, the, the situation that you might be in. You implement different things. If it is not working, it is important to let it go. And it had to take a lot out of me to then say, because you know, evidently when you're starting a business, you invest a lot of money in it. You know, so to let it go, it took a lot out of me, but it was the best decision that I had to do. But also knowing that, you know, when if one business fails, it doesn't then mean that you are a failure. It only means that you've learned a lot. It only means that you're going to do it better as you pick yourself to move forward. So I had to go on a, a year and a half, or I'll say a year and a half to two years of sabbatical just kind of weighing off that heavy load that I had. And uh, 2019, which was then last year, I then pick up myself. I decided, you know what, it's time now to move into another challenge. So I'm um, hence now, uh, I've opened another business, which is a franchise. It is situated in Cedar Square and it's operating. It was, we were actually, be uh, just prior to lockdown, the business was about to just hit a mark of, uh, you know, when they, they say a business, you need to give it two to three years before you can break even. But when you know who's in charge of that business, when you sit back and relax and say, Heavenly Father, I'm going to do it right with you this time around. And I'm not going to stress about things that I don't have control over. This business was almost on the blink of just reaching the, 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 the mark that we had thought we'll reach it in two years time, in 24 months, we were about to reach that mark. But you know, COVID-19 happened. Um, and, and here we are today, but it doesn't mean that when COVID-19 happened that we then have to have little petty parties and say, I don't know, 
we pick up the pieces and we move forward. Um, and also I have another business that I am also involved in, which is a franchise. Again, I don't know why I keep on involving myself in retail, but I am in retail, <laughs> which is now based in, in, uh, in, in, in Wimpy. It's a Wimpy in, in, in four ways in, in Gold Reef City. Um, this business, my goodness me, was doing very well. But then again, it's in a theme park. And guess what? It's not opened. So I can't sit here and, and have, again, petty parties. It, it will open when it opens, which is, I don't know when, because theme parks, are, they are crowd pullers. So, you know, they, with the government regulations and protocols, you know, they are businesses that had to be open, but anything that was going to pull crowd, obviously it's gonna then uh, be affected. So we, we I, uh, so that's basically me in, in, in a nutshell. Awesome, Mulebu King, thank you so much for that amazing introduction. And um, you know, you shared some really key insights there um, in terms of business. And I think already if we are listening with an attentive ear, there are some things that we can actually just you know, uh, draw out of that um, introduction that you did. And I think one of the things that you said um, as a start, and I think this is important, you said as a woman in business, it's so important for us to make sure that we surround ourselves with the right level of support. You know, because as we go through this journey, in fact, as entrepreneurs, we need to make sure that we around us, surround ourselves with the right people, with positive people, with like-minded people, and also people that you can be accountable to. You know, so that we are able to motivate and inspire one another and also help one another, whether it be through knowledge sharing, um, you know, or maybe just through connections that we make available. But it's important for us to make sure we surround ourselves with the right people in business. And then another key thing that you also mentioned is that, and I think this is so key in terms of re-strategizing. So you mentioned that it's so important as, as, as entrepreneurs that when we have really started a business and we've put in all the efforts and things are not necessarily going the way we want it to go, it's important for us also then to just sit back, make sure that we go through that journey and that process of re-strategizing and um, finding the best way forward in terms of that particular model. But I think I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, I would just like to acknowledge a few people that are online before we do um, just go on to Medina. So um, thank you. We've got Centurion. Solina from Centurion has responded to us online. Um, Jen is from Observatory. So that's where she's connecting from. Um, I see more of you have joined. For those of you who joined recently, please also just tell us where you are connecting from. And also if you can share with us what type of business you are in, it would just be good to know the audience that we are dealing with. As well as our um, Facebook online presence. So awesome. We've got... Um, Many of you have started joining us. So we've got Ray, Ray Nido joining us. We've got Elizabeth, Sherry, um, Lei, Deneo, Polly, Chandra, Susan, Gareth, Lorraine, Freddie, Margie, Timbisile. Um, we've got JJ Foster. So we've got so many people who have joined in and who are already connected to our talk. And if I do miss you acknowledging you this evening, please know each and every one of you we're so glad that you could join us today. So, so well done for connecting with us. And um, I think, so let me just move on to our next panelist um, for this evening. And um, I want to also just tell you a little bit about her. So Medina is also a, a personal friend of mine. I met her many years ago and um, I will let her share the story if she decides to. But um, we've also, we, when her and I connected and um, I said this to her, and I said to her that I believe that we're going to be working together in the future. I didn't know how, I didn't know through which platform, but I said to her, she's an amazing woman. She's got so much of gifting, so much of talent, and she's got such a positive uh, presence about herself. And um, also she's been in business for many, many years. So I think let me also just go into um, her bio and just tell you a little bit about her. So, um, and this is Medina, very detailed, Molebuchen, just like you. <laughs> But for a change, Mulebu I must say I'm very impressed. You sent me one paragraph with your bio. So, wow, I was super impressed. <laughs> so 
I did expect a little bit more from Adina because this is also, you know, the type of person that she is. So I'm going to try and just really stick to the main points, you know, just in terms of her bio, and I'll get her just to fill in the blank. So uh, Medina Harvardy has vast experience in the world of advertising and marketing spanning over two and a half decades. So this experience now forms a solid foundation on which Dandelion Breeze Marketing and e eventing was built. A black female owned branding agency that develops businesses and entrepreneurs by building their brand both internally as well as externally. Dandelion Breeze creates a platform for their clients' businesses to express who they are, provide an opportunity for them to educate and inform customer audience, and more importantly, articulate the value that they can add, be it increasing revenue, profit, or organizational effect effectiveness and um, she's worked with various companies and um, I'll, I'll let her just share more about that but I also want to get into her next business venture which is also 25 on Crystal Lead Luxury Guest House and um, this is her current project she targeted at business travelers to experience a home away from home so Medina has ventured into turning her home into a space of luxury and comfort for many now that's the awesome thing about Medina. So her and I actually met through property and um, both her and I are also very passionate about property. And um, I'm just gonna let you take over now, Medina. I don't wanna take too much of your, 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 your thunder today, but I think, you know, just share with the audience, you know, who you are um, and also just share with us, you know, why you accepted this invitation this evening as well. And then we'll get into the rest of the interview. Sure. Good evening, everybody. And um, Candice, thank you for having me on this platform. Um, just to share a little bit about myself, I am a mother. I'm actually a grandmother. And um, I am a businesswoman. And what I truly, truly love to do is empower other women. Well, I shouldn't just say women, but entrepreneurs. Now, if I give a little bit about my background, I come from Zimbabwe. I've come across the rivers of the Limpopo. I started out in advertising and from advertising, I went into co-partnership with a company called Music Marketing International. So that's how I managed to tap into a lot of our local artists, our local celebrities, and align them, you know, to assist in brand building for clients. Um, music marketing then assisted many young artists to be on international platforms. And that's where the passion comes. When you can help and see others grow, I think that's the ultimate. With that, I then decided that I needed to do something different. You know, that's where purpose comes into it and standing so strongly on faith and knowing that God goes before us, I needed to create a business that represented who I am. And that's the dandelion. If you take a dandelion and you blow the dandelion, it sows the seed of sustenance. And that was the agency that was started. So that has three core competencies. The one part of it is brand building. The other is corporate social responsibilities and the others is internal marketing. And in all those platforms, you're actually helping others. You know, if you look at corporate social responsibility and you look at the gender-based violence and everything that we're going through now, I mean, Edcon being our biggest client, we actually tapped into the Orange Day to see how we could assist and create um, Edgars making a difference and empowering young women that have overcome abuse and helping them to sustain themselves. But with Edcon being my biggest client and with the current challenges that they were facing, we found ourselves in a space where 90% of our income was just not there anymore. So what is it that we were going to do? And that's how with my daughter having been married and left home and having this beautiful space, it was how do we turn this home into a beautiful space where we can earn an income? And that's how 25 on Chrysalite came about. 
And with that, even further, it was creating little spaces on the property that young entrepreneurs could rent space, empower one another to create an agency feel and earn from that as well. So that's where a little bit of the property comes in, you know, by letting out spaces to earn a bit of an income. So I think in a nutshell, that's where the entrepreneurship is. You know, it's like, how do we make a difference? How do we help others? And how do we grow our businesses? And if you look at COVID-19, one had to even step out further. And for me, it was really digging deep into what is the spiritual connection that I have, regardless of who your connector is. I mean, I love the Lord, and I believe that this is an anointed space that we're in. And I believe that his light shines through every one of us, and there's purpose. But one had to really dig deep. Because there were days where I was absolutely confident. And as you say, Candace, 90% of me is positive. But there were days where I didn't want to wake up. The tears were flowing. The fear was there. Well, how am I going to face another day? But where there's fear, there's no faith. So how am I going to dig stronger just to know that we all have purpose? And our Lord will never start something that he's not going to finish. So each and every day, it was tapping into what more can I do today? How can I do things differently? Now being a guest lodge, social distancing and everything that goes with it, I mean, where was an income going to come from? So I've actually had to even get rid of and sell one or two properties so that there is a bit of an income to take care of the daily bills. And a lot of us as women know, I mean, it's not just our children, it's families, it's um, parents, you know, there's so much more than just ourselves that we've got to look at. And I think being mentored in the past and mentoring many is what has helped me stand true to who I am. You know, one of the sayings that always goes is you say to yourself, how do I eat an elephant? And it's just bite-sized chunks taking each day as it comes and just knowing your purpose, standing strong and just doing the best that you can. Awesome, Adina. Thank you so much. And uh, um, I mean, once again, some really awesome nuggets that you've already shared with us just by giving your introduction. And um, I mean, one of the things that I'm also taking away from what you've just said is that um, you said that it's so important to find your purpose you know, to even find your purpose through business. And um, I really believe that, you know, business for me is a calling. I do believe that, um, you know, if you know in your heart that this is the direction that you feel you are being led to go into, then I believe that it's your time to actually be bold and step into that next season of, of, of you know, of what, what, what God has planned for you. And as Medina just mentioned there is that it's so important for us to find our purpose. And, you know, a lot of people have asked me um, also as I've been coaching and, and mentoring some, some entrepreneurs and, and property investors, you know, they've asked me, how do you actually find your purpose? Because I think at the end of the day, um, that really becomes so important for us as entrepreneurs and as human beings as a whole is to, is to know what your purpose is. Why were you born? Why are you here? And, you know, one of the best ways for me has been to really follow my dreams, you know, and in following my dreams, in following my heart's desires, I was able then, you know, to tap into what my purpose is or what I believe my purpose is. And, um, you know, our businesses and all these different avenues and vehicles that we express ourselves through really just become the vehicles through which we are able to then express that purpose that we believe we are, you know, God, God has placed on us. So, I think that's so important. Another thing that Medina said, and I think this is so awesome. So in this difficult time, even before COVID-19, I mean, the economy had already taken a dip and not just in SA across the world. So already she was preparing herself because she realized that, um, you know, difficult times were going to come. So what she did was she looked at her existing situation. She's got a beautiful home. I've been to her home. In fact, both her and Malay Bukheng have beautiful homes. And um, what she did was she used that space, that existing asset that she has, and she then converted it into a guest house as well as, um, you know, making workspace available for other entrepreneurs. 
So what's happening now is she gets to generate some income that is then able to, you know, to sustain her through the difficult times. And then another thing, Medina, that you mentioned there was that during the difficult times, one of the ways that you tapped into was because you had already purchased some assets, you know, some years back. And of course, um, you know, you've been in this game much longer than all of us. So you really made some good decisions, you know, a couple of years ago when you obviously, or many years back when you started your journey. But one of the things that she said is that she was able to tap into those assets, sell them at this time, not because she wanted to, but because she had to, why? So that she's able to generate some sort of income from that, which is then able to sustain her business as well as her family and her personal and financial needs, whatever that may be. And I think for, for women entrepreneurs, and, and this is why I'm also so passionate about property, is that as women entrepreneurs, we really need to find additional ways of generating income. I mean, Molebu King is also an amazing story. So she started out in, in, in the beauty industry. And um, after some time of re-strategizing and working through that journey, she discovered, okay, I can no longer just put all my eggs into one basket. So she's also branched into multiple businesses. Um, she didn't mention to you that she's also got interest in property. And I know her and her husband have already started also investing in property. Why? because she sees it as another way of generating income so that that is also able to sustain her during difficult times. So I think what I can take away from the both of you at this time is that it's important for us also to make sure that we, we do re-strategize as far as our businesses are concerned. And I especially think now during this time of, of COVID and what's happening, I think we are all as entrepreneurs, we have really been forced to lock ourselves uh, behind doors and um, instead of, 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 of really just staying in that pit, we've had to come out of that pit, lift ourselves up and say, okay, this situation is a reality. It is happening. It has affected us as entrepreneurs. And now we have to find different ways of actually moving our business goals forward. And that's what I want to tap into now, ladies. I want to find out from yourselves. So how have you been able to now really dig deep, you know, during this COVID-19 period? And what have you discovered you are able to do? So you've already mentioned some things, but I just want you to elaborate and share with us a little bit more some of the strategies and some of the decisions that you've had to make. I mean, Molebu Heng, you said that, I mean, your, your business was doing amazingly, amazingly well in such a short period of time. The goals that you had set out for, you know, um, which, which, which you only expected to realize 24 months from where you were before COVID-19 was already, you know, sitting at your doorstep. So your business was doing amazingly well. So that tells me that you definitely went into the right mm -hmm. strategy, you know, in terms of that particular business venture, but no one anticipated COVID-19. And now I want to find out from you. So as an entrepreneur, what has this really done for you? And what ways have you found um, are helping you just to, you know, work through these difficult times? I think that's really what I want to hear from you now. I think um, for me, with when COVID hit us, um, the one thing that I can say is that I was grateful that I had my house in order because no one anticipated this, firstly. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, um, we, we tend to cut corners. Uh, this month you pay the supplier, next month you don't pay the supplier because you, you're trying to, to make sure that you, 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 know, you, the, you keep the business afloat, but also at the same time, the people that will probably suffer that we don't get to pay are SARS. And I've had to learn that for me, it was utmost, utmost important that my house was in order because think about it. We had not anticipated COVID. We didn't know that it was gonna hit us. Um, you have a staff, I have a staff, uh, people, five people reporting to me, uh, essentially meaning that every single month you are liable for their income 
And, um, and, and honestly and truly, I, I'm grateful that, you know, with how our government had stepped in, in how they responded in making sure that, you know, yes, it's not enough what they've done, but in making sure that, you know, uh, businesses that there was the funding available for the UIF that you could tap into that. Now imagine if I had not been um, obedient and paying for my UIF, uh, because that's what we do as entrepreneur. You tend to say, okay, this month I'm not paying for this one because I don't, but I've learned through my previous business is that um, it's important to be submissive to the rulers of, of, our, of, of the people that govern our country and to make sure that we, we comply. Compliance is important, Candice. Um, so in me being able to comply, I was able to say, okay, the little that I could get from government was to make sure that I could patch up where I could patch up and pay my staff and move forward. Because at the end of it is that I had to be, I had to take leadership, number one, as, 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 a, as an owner of that business, is that there was no time to say, oh my goodness me, what are we going to do running around like a headless chicken? You needed, I needed to step, step forward and take leadership and decisive and decide this is what we're going to do. This is the situation that we faced with uh, and prepare and, and prepare my staff to say, um, we are in this situation. This is how we're going to respond and also motivate your staff because when you are faced in a situation like this, we've never been in a situation like this. So I had to then say, okay, so we are going to be okay. Yes, we're going through this, but we are going to come out of this, um, this situation and, and it's going to be okay. And also for me, another point that I just want to mention that I had to do was to engage respective stakeholders. Because, you know, again, when, sorry, I'm going to use this word, but when shit hit the fan, <laughs> is that we, we tend to want to hide ourselves, okay? <laughs> you want to hide yourself in your blanket and have your little petty party. It was no, there was no time for that. I needed to take control and make decisive decision, motivate my staff, involve uh, various stakeholders to say, this is the situation, how do we move forward? Um, and also, you know, remembering that in every crisis, there's an opportunity because, you know, the business that I'm in, I could then think, okay, in this situation, what can I do that could leverage, that could give us a little bit of boost in the situation that we're in, which we did. Um, but all I'm saying is that you gotta think well, uh, out of your feet as, as an entrepreneur, if you are in the situation that we, we, we had to find ourselves in. Awesome, no, that's, that's such good insights. And I mean, once again, you say that, you know, because your business has been compliant from a SARS perspective, um, you know, you were able to tap into some of the business rescue um, funds that were made available to um, businesses during this um, COVID-19 situation. So, and I think that's really good, good guidance there as is to make sure that as entrepreneurs that our business is in order. Of course, some of you may not be able to benefit from some of the opportunities that have been made available through those funds. But I think for going forward, it's important for us to make sure that we also remain compliant. So when, you know, these type of opportunities do become available, you know, we are able to tap into that. And also investors, you know, we also have to make sure that we remain compliant because for those of us who may at, you know, some point in our entrepreneurial journey, reach out to other stakeholders who may include potential angel investors in our businesses, we need to make sure that we can actually show them, you know, that we have been compliant for this period and we are able to provide all the information that goes with being compliant. So I think that's really good. That's really good guidance for businesses out there. And um, of, as a director of your business, um, leadership then plays such a significant role because now you're not only responsible for yourself, but you have to make sure that you, your staff remain positive and motivated 
because um, obviously they, they've still been affected by it, you know, so whether you've got access to some of the funds that are being, that are available, um, you know, it, it, it has still had an impact on, on the income and of course their job security. And, and I think that's important is to take leadership and make sure, you know, that we always keep ourselves motivated. And Medina said earlier on, she said, you know, they would, 90% of the time she was positive, but of course, we, and that's for all of us, we had that 10%, you know, that occasionally will kick in and, um, you know, just want to keep us down and keep us demotivated. And, um, but, you know, we have to make sure we get through that. So Malibu King says no pity parties. We, 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 we understand, you know, that this situation is happening, but, you know, let's, let's get out of that and, and let's move forward. So, so thank you. So ladies, what I am doing is I am making some awesome notes, um, you know, as you're sharing, because at the end of the day, for, for, for us as SME women, it's, you know, we want to make sure that we really provide people with information, you know, that can also help them, you know, in their businesses. So for those of you who are online, for those of you who have also logged in via our live Facebook um, uh, chat now, please do remember that, um, we are able to get some of the insights that I've taken. So I will make sure that I make a list of those insights and I will send it uh, or I will make it available in a document format that I will just make available on um, my website, which is www.candacevanbake.com. Um, so we will be putting it into the, the chat box. That's www.candacevanbake.com. So under resources, you, there's already some free tools and, and, and documentation that we've made available for you there. So this will then just be added, you know, to our free resources as well. And um, of course, you're welcome to subscribe and we're also able to share some of the information, you know, via our monthly newsletters as well. So great stuff. So I think that's really uh, awesome. And another thing that uh, Molly Buchen just mentioned is that, and this is something I said in the beginning when we got started, is that you know, even in a crisis, there are opportunities. And um, she had to really also engage stakeholders um, so that collectively together, you know, they could strategize, brainstorm, and find new ways and different ways of moving their business goals forward. And that's what we've all done. A lot of us have done as entrepreneurs is to start engaging with more stakeholders, looking at our current business models, finding out where we are, what's working, what's not working, and then finding ways of actually moving those businesses forward with the resources that we've got access to that can help us at this time. So I think, Medina, if we can just uh, tap into your insights um, at this time is, you know, for, for you as a business, you've already mentioned, uh, Medina, that um, you, before COVID-19, you had already started this business venture, The Guest House, just as a, a, another business venture and as another stream of income, that can obviously, you know, sustain you and your family. But I want to now ask you, in terms of the new business venture that you have at the moment, which is the guest house, because you used to cater exclusively to business clients, um, which were probably traveling through Johannesburg, you know, from the, coming from different countries, and of course, also maybe from different provinces, but because of some of the restrictions that we still have in place due to lockdown, you know, you are not able to engage with those type of clients, um, you know, in the same way that you did prior uh, to COVID-19. So I just want to find out from you. So as an entrepreneur, what ways have you found at this time to help you actually um, continue moving your business goals forward? Okay, so Candice had to really think out the box. I had to say, okay, you are creative. You come from a marketing and advertising business what are you going to do differently? So I've always believed in relationships. I've always believed in when two or more are gathered, our Lord is in the midst and you have to reach out. So I looked at my networks and being a seasoned traveler, you know, that's why the guest house and having all the different spaces, knowing what's required when you travel, I came across relationships where, with people where I had booked flights, people that were part of Flight Center, people that were part of Booking.com. And I thought, how can I tap into different spaces where I can tap into the corporate traveler? And that's how I managed to work on a document where I could become a supplier to Flight Center. Now, becoming a supplier to Flight Center at that leveraged 
that relationship so that I could get Flight Center to position me as a preferred space as soon as the business market opened. And that has already started. I mean, I think it was last week that we had three bookings and then it went very quiet again. So I've had to find different ways of getting feet through the door and ensure also that we got a permit so that we could have people on site. And then my daughter has the gift of chefing. She comes from a background where I love to cook, my, my mom loves to cook, and she's just about qualifying as a pastry chef. So we tapped into her space and Coco and Spice which is the company that she runs, has been delivering food. And with that delivering food came the passion again. It's always about being selfless. So COVID-19, yes, it's made me think as an entrepreneur of how I leverage the business, but more so it made me look inside of the waste that we actually have. We can do with so much less. So all the extras, was leveraging in the community, people that are sleeping underneath bridges, neighbors that are not eating. How is it that we can extend ourselves? Because it's in the giving that we actually receive. And that's when you are in a space of fulfillment that the mind is open to receive more. So that's what I've really done. I've just decluttered. I mean, even if you look at your closet and you look at how much you have and with the winter coming, the cold, the needy. So as an entrepreneur, as a business person, focus on others. And when you focus on others, it takes you away from what was just shared by Mole Boche, where she shared, there's no space for a pretty party. So it's in the giving that you actually receive more. So I find that I've been a lot more selfless. I've acknowledged how much waste there is. I've tapped into relationships and I've just extended myself more. And that's what has kept me stable and kept my feet on the ground. Uh, that's, that's really amazing. And um, I mean, you know, uh, we also know that, you know, the Bible teaches us about the principle of, of sowing and giving. And we know that when we give, we can always expect more in return. So we can always expect a harvest. And at the same time, it's important for us to, you know, have a cheerful heart as we're giving. So like you say, becoming selfless and really giving from your heart. And as you're doing that, you are also opening yourselves, yourself up for more blessings and more receiving. And that's so true. And I think um, even Molebu can uh, would agree with me that, um, you know, that's exactly how it works, is that the more we give, the more we are able to receive. So even as entrepreneurs, I think it's important for us at this time, you know, to find different ways of giving. Some of us are connected to churches where, you know, they've been able to give to uh, the homeless at this time, and we've been able to sow into some of those projects. Some of us know people within our own circles who are going through a difficult time, you know, whether it is just a small donation that you can give, whether it be through finance, through clothing, through food, whatever it is, but it's also to help make a difference and help someone else as well. And, you know, we all do it as we are led to do. So no one's put under pressure, you know, to say that you need to do so much or you need to give so much. But at the end of the day, I think that's really what humanity is all about. It's about caring for one another and also, you know, finding ways of sharing our gifts. Um, and, and that way we also get to open ourselves up, you know, to receive more. Maybe not today, but there is going to come a time when you are going to be in need. And because you've sowed all of those lovely seeds of giving, you are opening yourself up to opportunities to receive in the future. And, and, and that really is a principle uh, that we can count on. And then also, Medina, I think, um, you know, it's so important and both Molebu uh, and yourself has, has also emphasized this point is that we need to really leverage existing relationships. And through leveraging those relationships, we are then able to find new ways of moving forward. 
So ladies, thank you so much for your insights, you know, that you shared this evening. And I am going to ask the audience at this time. So ladies and gentlemen out there, if you have any questions, some of you joined us late into the, um, the webinar. I can see some of you are online. Um, the webinar will also be available via our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. So for those of you who missed, um, you know, the, the first half of this conversation. Um, so if you can also just, um, uh, um, just uh, uh, Chardonnay, if you can just share that with our audience as well. Um, but I am going to ask the audience if you can please just share with us any questions you may have. So all our online attendees, you will see that there is a section called Q&A on the Zoom webinar. If you can just share with us your specific questions that you have in that Q&A box, and um, whether it's for myself, whether it's for Molebu Heng or Medina, please share your questions there. For those of you who are watching us live on Facebook, um, please also you are as much part of this conversation as our, our online attendees. So please also do share with us your comments and your questions, and uh, we would love to engage with you. So normally there is a little bit of a delay. So I think whilst everyone may be getting some of their questions um, ready, um, I think just to maybe tell you what's coming up, um, you know, just as part of our SME Women um, and, and Candice Van Vake platforms, just to share with you what's coming up. So please don't miss our Reflections interview tomorrow. So I am interviewing also the amazing Antiki Mekize. She's also a social entrepreneur as well as a mentor. And uh, some of you may know her. She's also the second princess of our Miss South Africa 2015. So I'm really looking forward to having that conversation with her tomorrow. So that's on our Reflections uh, uh, live broadcast tomorrow at one o'clock. Please do tune in on Facebook. And once again, it will also be made available on our YouTube channel. So please connect with us there. We're going to be talking about uh, branding you. So, you know, how can you actually brand yourself successfully um, during these times to make sure that your business brand, your personal brand, comes out on top on the other end of COVID-19. So I think that's going to be a very good topic that we're going to be having there. And then, of course, um, some of you also wanted to, when I uh, interviewed the amazing Zola Takiso some weeks back, uh, some of you asked that we actually put together a, a time management workshop to help you, the woman in business, better prioritize your time as well as tap into some online uh, free tools and resources that are available to assist us with some of our business activities. So we've obviously listened to you from that perspective Perspective, and her and I are collaborating. So we will be doing um, that woman in business time management workshop that will take place on the 9th of July. So if you go onto the website, uh, www.candacefanvake.com, you are already able to register for the event um, via the website as well as all the other social media platforms um, that I have in place. So please do register for that event. And that is really just to help us as women in business just to better prioritize and also learn how to prioritize and also learn about all of these tools that are available and freely available. And some of you may not even know about all of these tools that are freely available to us online that we can already tap into that can help us manage some of our business activities. So please do remember um, just to register for that particular event. So that particular event is a paid event. Um, it is only $2.99 for that particular event. So it's not one of the free events that we've been doing. So for the time management workshop, you have to pay a small fee there in order to register. Um, but of course, you're going to be getting all of the information in terms of the resources and all the other uh, tools that you will have access to. Okay, also email us on info at candacevanvake.com if you do have any questions. I know some of you prefer to actually register via email, so you obviously have the opportunity to do that as well. And then don't forget about our upcoming business coaching program. So that officially kicks off on the 30th of, of June. So some of you have have already enrolled for the business coaching that I will be delivering. Um, you would have seen across the, the, the platforms that there are different modules. So either you can um, enroll for the full program or you can decide, you know, that, okay, Candace, I'm only interested in, in, in attending this particular mod module because this is where I need assistance in. You are then also able to then just register and enroll 
for the module that you are interested in. And once again, you can do that via the website um, under upcoming events, or you can also do it via email. You can engage with us. So there is still some time to enroll for that workshop. Remember, it is limited to 30 attendees only. So we do still have some spaces available. So please remember to enroll for that program should you be interested um, by latest next week, Monday. Okay, great. So I think um, that should have given everyone enough time now to actually leave some of their questions. I will be checking the devices that are in front of me here. So I see we've got a question here. So the question here is how do you handle your family life and business life as you are married or have kids. Okay, so we've got a question here, and I'm going to direct that particular question to Malibu Heng, um, and I'm going to ask her if she can just share with us from her perspective how she's been able to handle family life as well as business life, and um, I will then also just give Medina an opportunity to share her insight, and then I will also just share my insights. Malibu Heng, if you can just share with us, you've got a mate, you've got beautiful boys, two boys who still need mommy's attention a lot. I know that. And you've also got a wonderful husband who also needs your attention. So tell us how Malibu Heng has been able to find the balance. <laughs> um, sure. All I'm going to say is that right now, homeschooling is showing me flames, okay? So I'm not sure about balancing anything right now, but under normal circumstances <laughs> where, you know, um, business for me, it is, it's not my priority. It is priority, but it comes second. Uh, in fact, it comes third because, you know, I, I live by knowing what's important, my God, my family and business. So you always have to, you know, this is one of the pecks of being an entrepreneur is that you are able to put your kids first. If you have a situation, I had a situation with my eldest son where he will forget things at home and I'll get a call most of the time. He won't phone daddy, he will phone mom mom, I have forgotten my kid for, and I've got basketball in the afternoon. So one of the advantages of being an entrepreneur is that you control your own time. You don't have to report to anyone. You can quickly step out, come home, get what needs to be delivered. So it's all about just knowing what's important and stepping in into each and every role that you have to play at that particular time. But when you are in that role, making sure that you are fully present because there's a thing that we do is that, you know, as you are a working mom, being at home and not being able to be fully present where you've got your devices with you, you your child is talking to you. So what I try to do is to know that when I step back at home, and when I have time, when I'm preparing dinner for the family, when I have time to catch up with my kids, whether we're doing homework with the little one or I'm just catching up with the eldest one, is that I'm fully present in that role that I play. Same applies when I'm at the office, I mean, at the shop, I'm working at the store with the guys, we're catching up, I'm fully present in that role that I play. When it's time for me and hubby, when the kids are sleeping, and it's time for us to catch up and talk about our days. I'm also fully present in that role that I play. I think it's really just important that you have to just be aware that when, which cap are you wearing? Am I wearing a mommy role, a boss role, or a, 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 um, a, a wife role being at home and making sure that you played well, you fully present, you engaging and because I don't think there's an easy way to say this is how I balance. It's just a matter of when you step into different roles, just make sure that you're present and, and you fully, fully engage with whoever you need to engage with. Awesome. No, I think that's very good insights there. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, 
I think, you know, one of the things that I've also had to do, um, and, you know, I've always been a workaholic, so I've only been married for about two and a half years, going for three years. And um, you can imagine I got married very late in my 30s. And, um, you know, I was so used to always doing my own thing, you know, uh, managing my relationships, my various business ventures, and now I have a husband who also requires, you know, uh, uh, some quality time in terms of spending that time together. So, and he also expects me to be present, so I've also learned, you know, um, to become more present. It's not always easy, but um, it's important for us to make sure that we continue sustaining those relationships. Another thing that has also helped me is that, um, you know, I find that also in sharing, you know, your dreams and your goals with your partner, you know, also becomes very important. Um, my husband really understands my heart and, you know, why I do what I'm doing. And um, he gives me so much support. I honestly, I, I, I I can't, I can't complain in that department. In fact, you know, always before I do a webinar, he's always around helping me to set up, get the lighting right and all of these wonderful things. So, you know, he's always supporting me in my, in my ventures. And I find the reason why I get more of his support is because I also share my dreams and my goals with him. So it really makes it easier, um, you know, to, to also get that so uh, support. And also when I'm going through different seasons in my business, if I'm working on a particular project, I would share with him that, um, you know, babes, for the next seven weeks, um, uh, I am going to be focusing on, on this particular project, which will require my time every Wednesday from this time to this time. You know, um, are you comfortable with that? This is the reason why I'm doing it. So I also try and engage him to, you know, for him to understand what I am going through, why I want to go through it. And I never have to try and persuade him to, to allow me that time. For, for me, it's just sharing that part of me with him so that he understands. And that way I've really uh, received a lot of his support in, in, in the various things that I do. But um, I think what Mole Buching says, and, and as, as, as a woman in business, you know, um, and I'm still a work in progress myself is to make sure that we always have our priorities right. You know, and um, whatever your priorities may be, I think it's important for us to also know that our family should come before our businesses you know, if we really want to be successful. And I'll maybe just ask Medina, you know, just to elaborate a little bit from your side, Medina, because I know you share the same sentiment as far as putting our families first. If you can maybe just share with us your perspective. Okay, um, I definitely agree with both you ladies. I mean, God first, family, and then business. And um, I think my journey has been a bit of a roller coaster because if I think of when I started out, I got married at the early age of 18 years old and had my daughter so and then got divorced so when I started out in business I was a single mom and that was very very difficult so if you talk about balance I don't think there was anything called balance you know because work is demanding and I was still in the corporate world at the time and um, hence I stepped out into entrepreneurship so that I could manage my time a lot more. But I was extremely blessed to have a helper at home that took Cherise like her own daughter. So she was there 24 seven. So you have to have support, you know, and with that support, I was able to work day and night, work through the evenings and especially working on international business I could work through the night while she was asleep and I could be with her in the morning and make sure that I picked her up from school because that was my time. That was mommy daughter time and I was not gonna give up on anything, you know, to avoid that. So that was one part of my life. And then as life's journey continues and um, life progresses, I then have my parents, you know, and um, coming from Zimbabwe, my parents were in New Zealand because Zimbabwe is just a difficult place to stay in. And you find as an entrepreneur, as a daughter, as a businesswoman, most of us are in a space where we take care of our parents. Well, that's where I come from. So we are now a generation of four where I have a cottage on the premises and I look after my parents too. So that's where a lot of support comes in as well because you have aging parents, but they're there to support you. As you both mentioned, a mother's love is so strong. I mean, she would do anything for me, just like I would do anything for my daughter. 
So you try to balance your life where family comes in and you have the support. And balance flows different ways. There's times where business is extremely hectic and you are 80% on business and then you find times where business is not as hectic and you can focus on family. So that's how I find business as an entrepreneur. I just believe there's seasons. Yes, no, that's so true, uh, Medina. And I think, you know, it's when we are also able to share um, those seasons with our families so that they also understand what's going to be happening during those seasons um, in order for them to, you know, give us that additional support. And some of you maybe may not have parents with you um, you know, but um, if there is an opportunity, you know, to find a, a good nanny or, you know, just good support that can assist you that odd occasion, you know, when you do, do need a little bit of, a, of relief, I think that's so important. Um, so I hope, Lina, that that has answered, um, you know, your question, given you at least some insights. Um, I think, um, you know, as far as using some tools and resources that can help us with business activities, I think I think, as I mentioned to you, um, you'll be able to get some more insights um, from the workshop that will be made available. But from what we are hearing from the, our panelists this evening is that it's important to make sure that we have our priorities right. And then also to make sure that we are present when engaging, you know, across those uh, priorities. And then, of course, also to find the right type of support that can really help us to, to better manage some of our responsibilities. And um, yeah, and I think a, a woman will always have multiple things that she needs to do. That's just the nature of being a woman. Um, I don't think that responsibilities will kind of, you know, reduce or whatever. Yes, we might maybe get a breather every now and again. But um, I was sharing with a friend not so long ago and I said to her, um, you know, I was doing an online webinar that particular day and I said, if you just knew what I was going through prior to that, you know, trying to get um, the meal ready for my husband, because obviously whilst I'm doing the online webinar, he needs to eat. <laughs> and uh, yet I'm so busy trying to just finish off a few things. So I'm telling you, sometimes we have lots of um, fun, you know, as we're pursuing our goals. But, you know, as women, we are resilient and we make it work. So, you know, um, Chardonnay, what is that saying that you have um, that your, 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 your grandmother teaches you? So there's a saying um, that she shares with you about taking on more work. How does it go again? Just share with us. My granny has always taught us from a very young age that the more you do, the more you can do. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's very good advice. And, and I think that's exactly how it is. So the more we do, the more we can do because we're always building ourselves up and finding creative ways of doing things. Um, so I don't see any more questions. Lena does say thank you um so much uh, for for our insights there so she's she's very happy with that um i do not see any other questions i do still see people are online but it doesn't seem like people have more questions so ladies and gentlemen now is your time if you've got more questions um we're about to close so please do um uh, just share your questions with us and what we're gonna do is we're also gonna um so I'm going to ask both Molebu Heng and Medina just to leave our audience with just some, you know, last few words that you can share with entrepreneurs out there. If you can just leave us with a few words. But whilst you're getting that last statement ready there, I just want to say to all of you that we will also be making their contact details available for you on the chats. Um, so please, if you want to connect with them um, across any of their business ventures, um, if you do see synergies or you see an opportunity, um, you know, for service or, or product that you may need, please do connect with them across their, um, the, their businesses that they have. We will be making their, their contact details available. So they have shared with me their social media platforms. Um, they've also shared with me their email addresses um, where you are able to contact them on. So I will be sharing that in the, in the chat box. Um, and this will be on our live Facebook page. Um, so if you can, please just go onto our, my Facebook page, which is Candice Van Bake. We've put it onto in the attendees um, chat box. Um, so if you can just connect with me there and then go onto the live video, um, you know, you would be able to see the, the contact information there. So please do connect with us. And um, yeah, and I think that um, I don't see further questions coming through, but I'm going to ask you 
Um, Medina, if you can maybe just share some last words with um, entrepreneurs out there. Well, all I would say is, you know, Pastor Ray always says to us, delay is not denial. So we're all being pruned and we're all being groomed. You know, just um, persevere, stand strong, dig into that um, spiritual resilience and just reflect, plan, and most of all, act. So many people fail to act. And that's actually what makes a difference. You know, there's many people that have dreams and ideas and never ever put them into action. And that's where you see the definement of success is act and take one step at a time. Like I shared earlier, how do you eat an elephant? Bite-sized chunks. And just keep on moving on, ladies. Let's stand together and let's persevere. And thank you so much for the time, you know, just to have spent it with you all. Truly grateful. Thank you, Medina. Thank you so much for those last words. Really do appreciate it. And um, Malibu Heng, from your side, just last few words for entrepreneurs out there. Um, for me, I think I'm reminded of the book of Ecclesiastes um, 3, verse 11, that to everything, there's a se to every season, there's a lesson. Um, we, we are in this season that no one obviously anticipated, no one knew how to, in fact, to this day, we still don't know how to handle it. But um, we do know that every season that come, it's meant to leave us different to how it has found us. It's meant to prune us, going back to Medina's, um, echoing Medina's um, words that, you know, everything that we go through now it's meant to just make us better, make us reflect, make us just look at things differently. And again, to my point that in every crisis, there's an opportunity. We just have to keep on looking and looking and know that, you know, we, you know, for me, knowing that I serve a merciful God, that his mercies I knew every single day, that with everything that I, the challenges that I am faced, that in fact, all of us that are faced with, that he'll never leave us, nor forsake us, because he's God and he's good and he's love. Um, so yeah, let's just hold on to that, knowing that we serve a faithful God. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, just have that support. It's important because these are really trying times. People are going through the most. But knowing that you can call someone, you can engage with someone, you can just uh, have somebody just motivate you, let you know that it's going to be okay. Because in every season, there's an end to it. There's no season that's meant to last. I refuse to believe that no matter <laughs> what we are going through right now, it's going to, we're going to come out of it and we're going to come out of it better. Thank you. Thank you, Candice. This was lovely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Molebo King. And um, thank you so much for sharing your heart with us there. And um, I really do agree with you both, ladies, is that we really, during these times, we need to cast our cares on the Lord. And, um, you know, he is there to help us, to carry us, to sustain us. And for some of us, this thing is too big for us to even imagine or understand but I think at the end of the day, as Medina also mentioned, let's just take it one step at a time. And, um, you know, I want to, from my side, I want to also leave you with these words. And I started, you know, sharing this in the beginning of our uh, talk for tonight. And I said to you, you need to dig deep. So as an entrepreneur, dig deep during these times. You know, so dig deep into your creativity, dig deep into becoming more innovative through your businesses, dig deep into your relationships that you are able to leverage, you know, reach, dig deep into your network, find ways, find people, find resources online, opportunities, you know, so don't be depressed and, and, and stay in that state of, of depression or of, you know, uncertainty. 
let's use what we've got available to us. I mean, the internet is our oyster. There's so much of information that we can find on the internet. So use this time really to understand your purpose, to understand your calling, to understand your business model, to understand why your business really exists, how you are able to uh, become a solution to a lot of the problems that are out there today. There are so many problems out there. Let our businesses be those solutions. Um, you know, to those problems. And to do that, we're going to have to dig deep and find ways um, that will set us apart, you know, from what the next uh, uh, business is doing out there. And now is also a time, as I shared with you on a previous um, chat, I shared with you, now is the time for us also, you know, to pull, to, to, to hold hands and to find ways of coexisting, even across your competitor base. Find opportunities to collaborate, find opportunities to work together, because we all are going through uh, a factual uh, difficult season at this time but together you know we are able to find solutions and still be able to move our business goals forward and then remember as I share with you at the end of all our entrepreneurial events and workshops as entrepreneurs we have one thing in common we don't quit and we never give up so just remember that. So rather find new ways of doing things, even if it means re-strategizing, but don't give up, ladies and gentlemen. And stay connected to platforms such as this and other platforms out there um, who are able to support you, you know, along your journey so that you can tap in and learn from other people's insights and learnings and information so that you are able to move forward. So thank you so much for your time to all our online attendees on our um, Zoom webinar, as well as on Facebook. Thank you so much. If you do have further comments or questions, please do leave it in our chat box and we will attend to that um, by latest tomorrow. So please do leave that information. I also wanna say thank you so much to these amazing women, Medina Molebu Heng, you guys are, you ladies are amazing and your insights that you shared with us, your heart that you shared with us, I know that you were able to definitely uh, touch someone out there, inspire someone, you've definitely inspired me tonight. And I just wanna say thank you so much for making yourselves available um, you know, to share this platform with me. I, I hope it's, it's the first of many more to come. And um, I hope that mm -hmm. together we would be able to find different ways of you know how we are able to collaborate and, and help some people out there. So thank you so much. Also special thanks to Chardonnay. She's been joining me week after week, um, representing our SME woman, assisting me with some of the administration online. Um, so thank you so much Chardonnay for, for, for your support. Thank you for being such a young lady that's so hungry you know, for success and wanting to learn from other women so that you can use those insights and apply it to your journey. I really do believe that God has got a good plan and a future for you. So well done for, um, you know, making yourself available and, and also sharing this platform with me. So thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. You must have an amazing evening. Thank you to your families out there for affording you this time to talk with us. And um, our online attendees, once again, thank you so much. God bless you all. And thank you. Thank you, Candice, for this platform. Thank awesome. you. Thanks, everyone. It was lovely meeting you all. Thank you, ladies. Keep well. Okay, ciao. Bye. Bye-bye.